Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Pathfinder Kingmaker Enhanced Edition with me, Frank Don. We're going to go back to the capital. Uh, we're going to talk to Harem, and then I have a plan on how I'm going to kill four days worth of time uh, for Jubilost's quest. What I'll do is I'll talk to Harem. I'm going to rest up. That should knock out about a day. And then we're going to teleport to the town in Glenabon, and then we'll explore for the remaining time, uh, ensuring that we have enough time to get back to the capital. For Jubilas quest. Because remember, teleporting takes no time. Let's see, Harem is all the way up here. Should move. All right. It is over. Yes, I thought I was free of my past burdens when I accepted Grotus's truths into my heart. It is only now that I have become truly free. You know, Don Victus, I used to hate them all so much. The dwarves who ousted me, the god who rejected me. Now I look upon this, and I barely remember that hatred. How pathetic they are, with their pride and their stubbornness. Building their toys to die among them, powerless to unmake the things they've made. I laugh, but in fact it makes me want to cry. But on the other hand, I thought, how should I put it? Harem wraps his beard around his fist. My gift, wherever it came from, the gift to destroy, to help others create. Perhaps my god does something similar. Everything that has a beginning has an end as well. One day, Gertus will be free and destroy this world. But imagine what will happen then, after the end. Perhaps a new beginning. A new creation in a new world. Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, thank you Don Victus. Without you, I would have kept going in circles our resentment and hatred gnawed at me from the inside. You helped me find peace, and I swear by Grotus, I won't leave your side until it's our turn to crumble to dust. Yeah, we may have made a mistake. It's a pity we didn't have time to find out who, according to Dorvin Law, has the better claim to the fortress, the living or the dead. Harem shrugs indifferently. Laws and rules are even more ephem ephemeral than ourselves. Oblivion will not sue you, or call dust and ashes as witness. It makes no difference. Ephemeral. Ephemeral. This isn't it isn't effable? Gosh darn it, I just watched uh Good Omens. Anyway, I care not who won the fortress. What draws my mind are thoughts of my place in the world, and the true meaning of serving Grotus. Destroying, creating something new from the pieces, and destroying it again. Isn't that what you're doing here now, in the Stolen Lands? You've built your kingdom upon the ashes of countless predecessors. Ponder this when you have the time. Alright, that's it for Harem. Uh, we are going to rest. Ashing shield. This plus one shield was specifically designed to perform a shield bash. It deals damage as if it were a weapon of three size categories larger. Medium light shield deals one to eight points of damage. The shield acts as a plus one weapon when used to bash. Okay, well, I'll probably never, ever, ever use that. Alright, so we're going to travel to Glenabon. Do exploring for probably three days. I didn't look at the, uh, how long it took for me to rest. Hmm. Well, the reward is greater than the, uh, the detriment, so that works. Wind in the sails. Yeah, we'll put him on it. Why not? Yes, we have three days. 
Uh, here we go. North Bastion. Oh, this is Glenabon? I didn't put it further over? That was silly of me. That's fine. We'll go to a Pike Stretch. Oh, hold on. There we go. Alright, I need to keep track of the time, so I'm gonna quick save whenever I travel. I'm assuming we'll make it to like Giant's Palm and then we'll have to come back. Oh, didn't mean to do that. I'm actually gonna reload because every hour here counts when I'm trying to explore. Oh, we sh this is the area. When you're looking for Armag's tomb, this is an area that has a uh, an event that helps you locate it, and it makes the difficulty check of discovering it easier. Uh, this along with the project that I did to scout for Armag's tomb. While trying to cross a small river, there were tons of the there were tons of them in those parts. We met an old man that would be considered suspicious even by local standards. He had a gray beard, and his straw hat sat above it, a head of coarse, dirty, tousled hair. The man was skillfully guiding a small raft along the river with a long pole, and a fat water rat sat near his bare feet. Noticing us, the old man approached the shore and hailed us in a local dialect so strange we could barely understand him. Ah ah ah, good folk. Where are you heading? Fleeing something, or looking for something? Ah, you're looking. I can see it in your eyes. Well, as the saying goes, those, those what seek will find. I can help you, surely, if you if you can pay me the right price. After hearing the old man's colorful speech, we asked the old man asked the old man who he was. The old man set out in a confusing explanation. It was difficult to follow, but we gathered that he wasn't just a river rafter. He was a cleric in service to a minor deity that was almost unknown outside the river kingdoms, Hanspur, guardian of waterways and river travel. Neither good nor evil, and tricky as the great Selen River itself, this god this. This god could safely guide your boat to uh, past sandbanks, rapids, and bandit ambushes to your final destination, or drown you in the stillest backwater. Many river travelers raise prayers to him in their hour of need, but few dare worship him openly. Rumor has it that Hanspur is no stranger to human sacrifices, and he takes toll from his followers in the collection of those who've drowned. Uh, ask him how he could help us. Let's have a bet, huh? You're all busy hasty, trying to catch a living barbarian with a dead name, but can you dive? I'll maybe drown you a little in the fa Father Selen's waters, let you know the taste of the river. If you can take it, I'll help in your searching. If not, well that's that. We never see each other again. The game offered by this cleric was, as dang was a dangerous one. One of our companions would have to put their life on the line uh, to get help in our search for our mag. I don't need to do it, but it's worth experience. So, we accepted the cleric's challenge and chose a diver from among our company. Ekundaya bravely went to the old man. The cleric wasted no time, grabbing Ekundaya by his hair and plunging him headfirst into the muddy river, up to his shoulders. Water plants tickled his face, and his ears filled with the whisper of sand rolling along the riverbed. Ekundaya took it in stride, so to speak. His lungs held air enough air to hang on for quite a while. A hazy vision suddenly engulfed Ekendayo's mind. He saw himself floating above the stolen lands, seeing the country from a bird's eye view. Another moment, and it seemed as though he would be able to focus his eyes and see Armag's tomb. Ekendayo kept on bearing the challenge. And I think we just leveled up. Paying no mind to the pain in his chest or the blood rushing through his ears, Ekendayo concentrated on the vision, trying his best to put it together, to focus on the Mad Chieftain's elusive tomb. Just as he thought he would surely drown, the picture finally emerged, and when it did, everyone else saw what Ekundaya was seeing. The wide and hilly Glenabon Plains, strewn with stones and carved up by small rivers, in the central part north of uh, Flint Rock Grassland, a barely noticeable rock held an entrance, like a gaping mouth that led underground. Some grim barbarians sat near the entrance, as though waiting for something. This had to be Armag's tomb. We'd finally located it. If we swept through the area, we couldn't miss it. At least, that was our hope. The old man let his victim go. Ekundayo pulled his, pulled his head from the water as quickly as possible, gasping for air. The cleric grinned, took, took his pole, and pushed off, the bank, pushed off from the bank. He waved to us with his tanned, crooked palm as he disappeared from our sight. 
All right, so I'm actually split on which uh, compounding duelist. The penalty from the Aldori Sword Lord's Shatter Confidence increases to minus two. Target also loses all insight and confidence bonus to these checks. Cool. Okay, so I'm split between Blind Fight and Outflank. So level 15, before we need Blind Fight... Right, I'm gonna bring Outflank. Um, I think we'll reach level 17 before we need Blind Fight. Now Shatter Defense is also really good. And I think that'll be the last feat that I get. Yeah, I'll flank, blind fight, and uh, shatter defenses. And that'll be my full build. Now if I went back, so next level, next level I have a choice to make. Either I need to go duelist or back to outdoor defender. I'm leaning towards duelist. I might take one more level of monk I may have explained this already, uh, for the evasion feat. Um, but if I go back to fighter, I won't have any problem taking, you know, as many... Well, I'm critical focus. Yeah, so I think I might go back to outdoor defender. Just for the feats. Because again, with outdoor defender, I'll get... If I take one more level of monk, I'll still get four more feats instead of just two. And if I, let's see, where is, I wish I could look at Duel. Let's go back, actually, to Duelist. I can't even take Duelist right now, because I don't have combat mobility. Yeah, so I don't think I'm going to bother with that. Oh no, what did I do? What feat did I bring? Oh no. Where's my class? What did I bring? No, that's not what I wanted. Right, let me load. That was a quick save. Son of a gun. Alright, I'm going to click through this event again real quick. Hopefully I succeed in all my checks. Gosh darn it. Nope. Alright. I'm going to keep reloading this because I succeeded the first time and I earned it. Gosh darn it. I can't believe I did that. I need outflank on my melee characters. So I know this probably isn't super exciting for anybody. There we go. All right. Adore Sword Lord next. All right. Where is it at? What was I looking for? Outflank. There we go. Harem will also get outflank. Could get him selective channel. <clears throat> I'm not that worried about it though. Because again, I try not to heal during combat anyway. Like for her though, she already has outflank as a teamwork feat. So, actually, I'm not even sure what she gets. Oh, Cleaving Finish. That's really good, actually. Uh, I'll get Shield Wall, because we do have Harem, and that'll help. Let's see. Chains of Light is really good. I might get Profane Nimbus for her. Or Sacred Nimbus. Uh... Actually, yeah, let's get a Disrupting Weapon. Canera, what do you get here? Kinetic Blast and Expanded Element. I'm gonna go and get her Blind Fight. But she doesn't, she doesn't have it, right? Because you get...
No, I think I think Halika has it. I'll go ahead and get it her Earth. I think Earth complements fire well. I don't actually know. I read somewhere. I looked it up. I think that's what I read. I'm just gonna get her combat casting. I don't know. I don't know what else I'd get her here. Maybe improved initiative. Or skill focus. Is there anything that she... Arcana, world, perception, and magic device and trickery. Nope, none of those. Or I could do empower, let's see. Yeah, I might get quicken. I need to start using my meta magic. Because I can use that for uh, slow or haste. And then for this, I'll probably get dispel magic greater. And I can dio. What do you get? Favorite enemy and favorite enemy. Alright, so here I'm probably just going to get him a uh, critical focus. In favor of enemy, um... Alright, shoot, here he has Fey. I think humans is probably the next best thing. Sorry if y'all just hit my desk. Um... Hmm. Giant humanoids, can I just do... Yeah, reinforce the Fey. Because we're not done with them yet. Alright, let's go to Fossil Fields. Again, keep, uh, keeping track of the date. Can't believe I leveled up my... Well, I'll take that back. I have leveled up my character incorrectly before. I think... I think it was this Let's Play. Instead of taking a Scaled Fist Monk, I took Regular Monk, which doesn't benefit. I don't reap the Charisma to Armor class benefits. In due time. Repent! You cannot stand against me. Zero damage. Reduced. <laughs> Uh, Holy crap, Roly. Well, sorry, I was just... Man. Medusas are nasty. It's alright, we're not gonna be out exploring long. We won't we shouldn't need Lindsay. Can't believe she just got disintegrated though. Oh man. That's pretty ridiculous. Alright. Yeah, I hate the fact that you can't I'm there. Resurrect her. And make her and Tristian. Uh, the fact that you can't resurrect them just makes it them, uh, in my opinion, the worst companions in the game. Which I guess, I mean, re reloading isn't hard. Oh, I didn't see this. Hardy purple soup. Okay.
that's just another reason to pile on top of all the other reasons to hate Tristian. Or Tristian. Again, I don't know how... I think I've seen it or heard it pronounced both ways in game. So. Alright, so we go to Wicked Field. Maybe. I'm going to quick save before I do anything else. So as of right now, it takes two hours to get back. Alright, this is a random encounter trying to go into Patox. Our road once again led us to the border of Patox, where bandits, unconcerned for the law, often lie in wait for innocent victims. Imagine how surprised we were when instead of bandits we bumped into a guard patrol. Could it be that King Irovetti was determined to restore order along his border? I've seen all sorts of miracles, but this would be hard to believe. The guard kindly informed us that the borders were closed due to, tra due due to a travel ban. It's not because of a war or plague, but because of the celebration. The kingdom was preparing for the Rushlight Tournament, and the king was busy giving personal consultations to painters, artists, and the masters of the stage who would be responsible for the event. The king and I exchanged smiles. Too bad for the poor artists. According to the guard, the king ordered the borders closed to keep secret the details of his coming triumph. The guardsmen were polite but adamant. Fortunately, we had no reason to challenge him and fight our way to Patax. Before someone could disgrace us with an ignorant question about the tournament, I gave my friends a short lecture. Trying to avoid overcomplicated vocabulary, I explained that the tournament was founded by King Irovetti and is held in the, on the Rushlight River. All sorts of champions gather from across the River Kingdoms. There they compete in fishing, a highly respected talent in those parts, the art of boasting, and the skill of fighting when you're so drunk that you can hardly stand on your feet. I still don't understand why everyone thinks it's so funny. There are many other interesting competitions in the same vein. The king specifically asked what would happen if we violated the ban. The guard frowned. Most probably we'd have a fight, and you would win. Then a diplomatic crisis would follow, and in any case, you'd be expelled from Patax. We discussed the situation and decided there was no need to derail our relations with Patax without a good reason. Unable to stop myself, I blurted out, could it be that the true reason for this ban is to prevent King Irovetti's subjects from leaving the country? The guards spared no effort to assure us that this was just a rumor and speculation, coming from unproven sources. But of course, we knew full well that it was no rumor. In fact, many refugees had fled Irovetti's kingdom to find a new home in our lands. I myself am, li am living proof of that. Having no reason to violate the ban, we turned back. Oh, the guards seem very nice. But again, then again, not everybody in the country is representative of King Irovetti himself, which we haven't met yet. He's an interesting guy. Share your will. Say the least. Alright, she's healed up. Let's explore the Wicked Fields. Or wicked Field. I'm off! Oh, that's right. I see no offering worthy of me. You wouldn't summon a demon without preparing an appropriate something. Alright, let's get some stuff going here. And for you, we need... Oh shoot, he's taking my levels. Oh no. Well, now it's too late. Oh, we have restorations and stuff to, we can apply. Not a big deal. Adamantine, Icy Burst, Star Knife plus three, Quarter Staff plus two. 
Page from Occultist Diary. Wonder how bad it is that I managed to translate only half the scroll for the ritual. Unfortunately, time's running out. I'll just have to sort things out on the fly. These simpletons won't know any better after all. Oh, Pax Grumetra, I'll soon rip your soul from these de those demons' paws. I promise. Hmm. That's what happens when you only translate half of a scroll. Alright, minus two. Where are my scrolls of restoration? Does that have to be? I think it has to be greater. Sorry, I, I need to buy more scrolls anyway. Both resurrection and um. Restorations. Just to be safe. It's time to act! In due time. I do need to keep in mind I don't have anybody with trickery currently. Since Lindsay's not with us. So how long does it take to get back from here? Six hours. All right, let's go check out Giant's Palm. Then we'll call it an episode. Hatred, ferocious Smilodon. Shmod because that was it. Torpor is the name of the um. How curious. The nightmare that we killed in that one area. Enforcer's robe, a whole bunch of diamond dust. All right, plus one armor class. This robe is made of a of an expensive fabric, but it looks unwrinkled with dark stains on its sleeves. This robe grants a plus one dodge bonus to armor class and a plus five bonus to unarmed attack and damage. It can be worn only by a monk of lawful evil alignment. See, it's not that good. The Enforcer's robe is probably the worst. Well, plus one to dodge is okay. I guess if you're doing unarmed damage, I do stack I that with a. Uh, The, uh, the amulets to give you bonus on arm damage. I can't can't remember the name now. But you find like a thousand of them in the game. Uh, there's nothing up here, right? I think that's the corner. Okay, yeah. Nothing else here. I'll take care of it. So we've done all the exploring that we've already done in less than a day. It's almost the 22nd. It might be worth going back, grabbing Lindsay, just in case I run across anything. Um, hmm. I'm split on what I should do. I could go grab this. Yeah, let's go and do that. So again, we're just trying to kill time. We have two days. Peaceful travelers. Maybe they have an upgraded inventory. I doubt it, but 
You can hope. Elemental protection. Only electricity and cold resists. 30 acid resists. It's really good if, you know, you have to deal with acid. Greater fire resists. So there's a lot of very specific resists. Advanced mental perfection plus four. Hook of resist plus six. All right, we'll be taking that. I think we'll also take that. You can have any of my non-unique stuff that I found. Just trying to save myself a little bit of money. Here, you can have both of these. It's not a big deal. All right. Who needs this cloak of resist? What do you have? Cloak of the bear. I have resist plus six. I'm gonna go ahead and give him the resist plus six. That was the other thing that I bought. Oh, I don't even remember now. A mental perfection plus four. Which is what you already have. Oh, I guess it doesn't really... I don't really need it for anybody. That's a little disappointing. Oh well. I'm off. Oh, it might work on Lindsay. I don't remember what she has. I think she's wearing that hat. I think the mental perfection would be better. Adventures can wait. What am I looking for? Oh, there we go. Alright, so I plan on resting. That won't quite take us to the 23rd. I hate just wasting time. I think there's some more areas I can claim, like these little blue markers. There's that one. I don't think we own this one. Yes, it's available for claiming, so we can like teleport to Varnhold. So that's what we'll do. I think to waste more time, we'll like teleport to Varnhold and claim these two areas. Stuff like that. We'll use this time to claim some of these blue spots in the next episode. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.